Okay, so this is another one of those. How does one move a 500 pound piece of cast iron by themselves? Well, uh, obviously you see I have this thing sitting on some angle irons. I got it. Some casters on it, some chains across the back of the angle irons, and right now to get it off the trailer, I just got a rope holding it. And this rope is wrapped around the front crossbar of the trailer. And this is a steel crossbar, it's not wood, so it's not going to break. I'm going to wait for her to focus here. Alright, that allows me to use it as like a brake. And I can literally, I can hold this thing back with one hand. So it's actually quite safe. So then, I walk around the other side here. Gives you a little perspective. Right now I just got the rope tied off on this bracket here. And when I untie it, I can steer it from the rear. It really doesn't take much. The rear is the swivel wheels. And the front wheels are the fixed wheels. And then it's going down ramps. And there's the trailer. So, this is my Powermatic Millwright move. This is the last piece I'm bringing home. So, Hang on a second, I'm going to set this on the tripod, and you'll see it all, good or bad. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to walk around the front here, and grab my gloves, and see if we can get this thing off the trailer. on the ground, it's easy to roll around. Here we go. 500 pound cast iron on the ground by myself. Okay, so this is it. This is D-Day. This is moving day. This is how a person gets a 500 pound piece of cast iron into the basement by themselves. Well, this is the plan. Uh, excuse the video because I'm just this just handheld on the camera. But you see, I got casters on the machine, and it's going to go up some aluminum channels that are very stiff to get up to the step. And then once I'm over this step, then I got channels on the landing of the step. And so that I can, in theory, 
push this thing up here by myself, get it over that hump, and those two blocks of wood should stop it just in case it gets away from me. Now those butt up against some channels that are going down the stairs. So there's some nice six inch channels and they go all the way down. Now the theory here, and I gave this a lot of thought, let's hope that everything comes together and works as planned, is that when I get this thing pushed up here, what I'm going to do is on the back I have chains mounted and they're bolted on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back my truck up to the door as much as close as I can get it and I got a winch attached to my receiver so that clip that's right there should go onto them chains and the advantage to using this winch is it's, a, it's an off-road winch. It has a brake and it will hold and I should be able to power feed this thing out and hopefully it'll run right down them channels like a train on a track and I shouldn't have any issues getting it into the basement. Ah, <sighs> Wish me luck. We'll see. Alright, so this is the plan. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this myself. Um, the, the estimated weight on this thing from Millwright or Burke who made this mill, it's a Burke Millwright knee mill. Now, pedestal alone should weigh approximately 500 pounds. It moves around on a flat ground pretty easy with these casters that I have set on it. Let's see if I can push it up these ramps. Okay, so this is the next setup. So I have the, the base on the landing. It's on casters. It's set, ready to go down, down the ramps. I got my truck backed up. I got the winch centered to the door as best I can get it. And the reason I say that is, is because I'm pretty much already on my property line. I kind of got a narrow driveway here. But I got her cocked at an angle as best as I can without taking my door out. Um, so if I walk up here, you're going to see, I've got the, let me get this focused, winch cables hooked up, alright, so let's see how it goes. I'll try to do this in stages, I might have to stop a couple times to reposition things, but try to show you guys if this is gonna work or not I'm hoping I got my fingers crossed okay I'm a little tight for space here I mean, I'm gonna try to show you what how this is gonna work right now it's it's just over the hump it's just starting to go down I got the front wheels over the hump and it's just starting to go down now, obviously you can see the winch cables tight it's holding it now, in theory, have the winch control. I should be able to go out nice and slow. And it's wanting to go cro crooked a little bit, so I got to see if I can straighten it out. bottom of the angle irons are dragging across the ramps. I gotta get past a certain point and then it will be on the wheels again. So I'm using the winch, using the winch for safety so that it can't get away from me. most precarious part trying to get it over this home. Maybe I 
make sure I'm lined up. make sure that the wheels are in the channel. And it's pretty close, like I don't have to pry it over just a little bit before I go any further. Okay, I'm back. I went ahead and found something to pry it over with. I'm just going to try to use a piece of angle iron. Should uh, should pry over, no problem. down and see if I have to move it again. scary part the whole thing is over the hump so now it should be a matter of just nice and slow I'm still centered in the channels let me see if I can get you an idea of what that looks like I'm gonna move the camera I'm gonna go handheld so it's gonna get a little shaky here so what am I looking at? What you're seeing, you know what I'm looking at is those front wheels down there and I'm trying to keep them centered in the channel. So, so far, so good. 
Uh, it doesn't even look like the channel's touching the stairs, so pretty much the channel is supporting the weight of this, the two channels. So, so far so good. I'm going to see if I can move the camera and bring it up in here so you can watch the rest of it. So I'm going to pause for a sec. Okay, so now the only real problem here is the cable for my winch remote is only 12 feet long. And I don't have the wireless remote for it yet. Mr. Impatient Me said, oh, I can do it with this. So I might have to go down the stairs and move something. Let's see how it goes. It's coming over a little bit. You can see it, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, it, like I say, it's in the channel, and I don't think it can it can possibly jump out of that channel. Channel. I don't have much further to go. I'm about halfway down right now. This noise that you're hearing is the cable is now cresting over the edge of the stair there. So what you're hearing is the cable, the, the, the winds in the cable going across this aluminum channel and it's making all that popping noise. Okay, I'm going to go down and give it a little bit of a push because it's at the bottom. Let me see how it goes. Straighten out that one caster. Looks like it's crooked. Oh. Reach my winch cable. And there we have it. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. I got a Powermatic Millwright base into the basement by myself. It can be done. You just have to be think things through. this camera, wind up the cable, and okay so this is another thing that I did with these channels is I drilled a hole and you still see the shavings and I put a screw in the ends here. I also did the same thing over here. I drilled a screw through here and I put it through both pieces and that was to help it or to keep it, I should say, from moving, maybe sliding off of the stair, or spreading apart, or whatever, so, but, uh, hey, it's in. I love it when a plan comes together. It actually worked, as I planned. So, where is this thing going? Well, go down here, push this thing out of the way. Now I'm in. This is this is going to be my metal shop, and I'm still working on getting it set up. 
I got my old, uh, my 1942 Burke number four. That's over here. And uh, these are all the parts for the knee mill. And the knee mill is going to go up against this wall. All right, that should be, it should give me some room, you know, whatever I need to move things around. All right, so it should go between the outer basement wall and uh, the Burke number four. And then uh, if I turn around here, there's a material rack, okay. And then if I turn around here, this is where, this is the other side of my little metal shop. Got my 49 South Bend Heavy 10. Alright. Uh, VFD that runs the South Bend. And my makeshift workbench with my toolbox on top. So I'm not done. I got more lights that I got to put in and of course now I'm going to restore this uh, I'm going to restore this Powermatic Millwright MVN get her painted up, cleaned up, polish up all the dials and go through the parts and see if there's anything wrong with it. Alright guys, that's how you do it. That's how I did it. There's probably a million ways to do it, but that was a real safe way to do it. One guy by himself. Uh, it can be done. Very cool. Ciao.